Who likes amaranth? Get it, buddy. What a good boy. Tasty treat. I'm going to put it down now. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Hi, Over. guys. My name is Melissa. This is my youngest son, Mason. Hello. And behind us, the garden, our main garden, has gotten completely out of control. So we're in the process of pruning some stuff back. I still have to mow in here yet. Um, and there's a lot of produce that we can go ahead and pick, including our garlic, which I'm going to start to pull now because I need that bed to move my um, squash into, as weird as that sounds. Last year, I collected a bunch of seeds for my zucchini. Well, they cross-pollinated with something and they are now crawling across the uh, garden so i'm just going to kind of corral them into one spot so that way i can at least mow around it because it's really gotten out of hand <laughs> yeah. all right hold on a second not that you can tell from this angle but this is my garlic bed and i just pulled one up now i'm going to have to look up what these are because I don't remember what I planted. I planted like five or six different varieties and I did them by rows. So as I go along here, what I'll probably do is I'll just overlay the names of that type of garlic onto the screen. Now this one was not that successful for me. Let's see here. I got one here. I think out of that row only two only two survived and they are not they're not very good. This one might have... That's the whole thing. It's a little guy. Get out of there. You are not helping. <laughs> so that's it for the first row. Get. Second row, we had a little more success. Now, these were planted uh, last year before the, before the beds were put away for winter. Oh, that one's deeper. Let's see. Little guy, get out of there. This is a different variety. Again, I'll do my best to overlay that on the screen for you. I'm going to have to look it up. Not all of them are that runty. These are definitely smaller. Like this, these two here are pretty decent. Let's see. Let me leave them. Another decent one. Yeah, they smell good, huh, bud? Uh, I think that's it for the second row. Stop, buddy. Remington! You're naughty. Thank you. All right. So that's for the second row. Those did a little better for us. Let's see about the third row. Trying to go wide on this because what I don't want to do is crack these uh, garlic bulbs open. Again, this is a different variety. I'm going to try to keep these separate. So this is row one. Just putting them off to the side. I know you can't see what I'm doing. Row two. Hey, Mason, how about you just put him outside? I love him to death, but he's got to get out of the garden right now because he's going to literally pick these up and run around and I'll never see him again. <laughs> now, we aren't going to eat all this. Whichever ones do the best for us like the top two or three. I'll probably save some of those cloves, and what we'll do is we will uh, plant them in the fall and hopefully get way more garlic than what we started with. So with a lot of these things that are more expensive to buy, like the cloves, and they take longer to get going, what you're actually doing that first year is you're growing out your seed for next season. Bulbs. All right, this is row four. We did not get a whole lot here. I think five is our best row, although I have no idea what size they're going to be. See, that just popped, and I'm like several inches away from it, so. There we go. Look at that guy. Ooh, that's a nice one. Mm-hmm. i got to come over to that side. 
We only have one more row four. Row five is going to be difficult to get to. <laughs> Just buried in the squash. This guy didn't get his bag. That's the last row four. So while I love the size on these, that whole row was planted, so they didn't all make it through the, our winter. It's the biggest one that we got so far. It's row four. All right, now the tricky part. Now, almost all the bulbs that I planted in row five made it through winter. So that's really good for us. Not very big. What's wrong? Let me got through. You literally figured another way Where'd he go? He went to the front. All right, we're back. We had to go catch an escaping puppy. <laughs> all right, so back to row five. One. And then we got one more right here. Let's see if I can get it out. Because that is a bad angle. There we go. All right. So number five did the best for us all winter long. All of that came back. Whereas we had a big die off with the other varieties. Mm -hmm. Show you here. So row one, you got the least. Row two wasn't bad. A little small, but not bad. Row three, we had some bigger bulbs. That one's not bad either. Row four, only three survived. And two of those are gigantic. And then row five was by far the best. All right, guys. We got to get back to moving all this. I got to move this whole thing back into this bed here because this is just a mess. I gotta prune back the tomatoes. I gotta help train up some of these vines on not just the beans, but on the squash plants and on the watermelon. And I gotta check our peppers and carrots, which I think probably have a bunch on there that they need to be picked. All right, I'll probably uh, add some more stuff, so hang tight. Guys, check it out. These are the Colorado Red Star artichokes and they bloomed. Two of them did, that one's starting. That's the biggest one over there. The other one's kinda got choked out for sunlight, so this one's all wimpy. One over there's even worse, but these three, I'm going to expect something from, although this one has not had a stalk come up yet. But these two, how cool is that? So I'll probably cool. plant more of these next year if, uh, if we like them. That is awesome. Little baby artichoke. Yeah, so the thing about the artichokes is they are technically grown over the course of two years. This particular species or variety it would be able to be grown as an annual, and this is it. So I don't know how big these get. I'm assuming it gets bigger than that, but that's the start. Really cool. All right, let's talk about the mushrooms, which have made an appearance for the very first time. Oh my God, that is a bad dog. And why we can't have blinds that aren't broken. Oh, Remington. Anyway, okay. So, um, yes, this bed needs to be weeded pretty badly. But let me show you. We've had some wine cap mushrooms. And I know they're really raggedy looking. And that is more than likely due to slugs. So I have not been putting anything down to bait them or kill the slugs off. And these look pretty well chewed up. Another one. This guy here. I haven't seen any more. But I'll be honest, like the strawberries have not been happy. Um, I've never had such a sad looking strawberry bed. So I don't know if the mushroom mycelium has something to do with that or not. It's possible. Kind of similar to what I was dealing with the peppers. And the other thing I wasn't expecting, I was not expecting the wine caps to show up until fall. So this bed I planted before the six beds that I seeded in the main garden, right? And I did check those and I have not seen any mushrooms pop up yet. So we'll see. That's pretty cool so far. At least this is some success. I know the mushrooms are here. They continue to grow after being seeded and they are fruiting. So 
Um, I do wish the strawberries were doing better, and maybe that'll be something I focus on next year. They're sweeting. Good girl. Hi. Well, it's been a few days. I kept getting sidetracked so I couldn't finish the video until today. But just wanted to show you kind of a walkthrough what we have going on. Garlic is all out of there. The Zucchini squash that uh, I've got like yellow zucchini basically this year more than likely crossed with my yellow straight neck So Let's go around and uh, check out what we got. So we've got honey nut squash here Coming in all over I'm gonna train a couple of these vines up All over These are pickling cukes the ones that are crawling up the, tre the trellis, although I probably can't tell them apart at this point because the other cukes, which are a slicing variety, which I put in the front here, grew way more than what the package said that they were going to grow. So they're all intermingled now. But there are cucumbers all over the place here. You can probably pick a couple of these today. We'll give those a try. Little babies all over the place. The watermelons look fantastic. Got baby watermelons coming in. These are Dixie Queens. Little babies all over the place. I haven't trained these up yet. We had a storm come through last night. And uh, it knocked a bunch of stuff down, including about 600 ears of double red sweet corn I have not fixed yet. My nasturtium started to flower. These are kind of getting nibbled on. If you're wondering what the white flowers are that I have throughout the garden, they are um, sweet alyssum. Sugar pie pumpkins. Completely overtaking the trellis. They look fantastic. I am a little concerned that we might have ended up with vine borers moving in because the bottoms of the vines are starting to die back, but... I mean, that's kind of also the nature of the plant. They are going to die back, but it seems really early. Maybe not. This is so impressive. I also plan on fertilizing. We'll see if that brings some of the color back. It may not. Uh, any extra peppers that I had left over, um, I, plant, I took them out of the greenhouse and put them in here. And this bed does not have any mushroom mycelium in it, but if you were following my other videos, I was struggling with... Uh, some sort of deficiency in the soil with the peppers that are there, there, and there. And those peppers were really struggling, and I'll show you those in a second because they're not struggling so much anymore, and I think I kind of figured out why. Purple jalapeno peppers turning into a jungle. I've already picked a bunch off of these. Whole beans. It's kind of a mess on this side, only because I didn't have a, a connecting segment of trellis between this archway and the bottom of the bed. Bush beans in the front row. These are tigger melons. I planted them late, just kind of threw them in, and whatever decided to grow, I let grow. So we'll see what we get this year from that. I still have a bunch of it in the freezer that I have not actually done anything with from last year. These are Chinese red noodle beans. And I don't think I've seen any flowers yet come in, so we don't have any noodle beans yet. Uh, vine borers got my yellow straight neck squash. Not a big deal. I got to pull it this weekend. I don't have any corn tassels coming in on the miniature blue popping corn yet, and this also seems much taller than it was supposed to be. So we'll see what we get. Asparagus looking fine. These are all bush beans intercropped with Blue Lake, uh, Blue Lake Bush and Royal Burgundy. Then we have Blue Lake Pole that's growing up along the side here. This is the back side of the tomatoes. Uh, we got some nasturtiums coming in here as well. They're reaching for sunlight. They'll be fine. 
and no flowers on these. I also mixed in some uh, more Chinese red noodle beans on any spot that had peppers on it because they would at least get some sunlight. So there's more on this side too. Noodle beans trying to come up. And anything that volunteered from last year, I kind of let it go, but it's a jungle. I kind of like it that way. This needs to get trained up a bit. There's a whole bunch there. And the cherry tomatoes are doing fantastic. Just got to keep pushing them up. Let them climb up the top of this. Yeah, so we got those pole beans are looking fantastic. I've only been getting a couple of handfuls a day so far off the bush beans. I'll get these later. They're looking good. There are the artichokes. See what I'm talking about? Yellow zucchini. I swear, these are zucchini. And when you cut them open, this, the, uh, the inner flesh is green around the edges and then is white. They taste fine. Tastes pretty good, actually. Cherry tomatoes. So here's the deal with the peppers. I'm fairly certain that mushrooms... I mean, granted, it changes from variety to variety, but the mushroom mycelium that may be in here is probably a heavy feeder on any magnesium that may be in the soil. And I think my pepper plants were suffering from magnesium deficiencies. Yes, I know they're a little chewed up here, but I did that Epsom salt spray mix um, a couple times a week. And now look how much these have perked up since the last time. Last time they were pretty much shriveled up and uh, dying very yellow. And let's take a look at the other peppers here. These are doing fantastic. These are my coral bells, which now after that, um, getting the doses of the, that Epsom salt treatment, I actually have these big peppers coming on some, of, on some of them. Nothing's turning orange yet, but it's a much better sign than what we were dealing with. I had just trimmed all these tomatoes back too. They were out of control. Purple beauties. I don't see any more. So they're still kind of struggling, but at least they're setting flowers now, and I am getting a couple of peppers off of them. So it made a big, a big difference. So just something to note, the mushroom mycelium may be heavy magnesium feeders. So if you have plant something like peppers with them, you're going to have to supplement. Tomatoes are looking good, though. These are the Thessalonikis, or Thessaloniki, I'm not sure how they're pronounced. Uh, aromas. I love Romas. We eat a ton of them. And Wisconsin 55s. I've got... Uh, my onions are not doing as well as they did last year. There's quite a variety in here. So we'll see. The Elsa Craigs, which I grew last year and replanted this year for seed, have gone to seed, which is fantastic. Need to do a little weeding in there, though. Uh, these were some last-minute potatoes I threw in, and there's three different varieties. I'm sorry I don't remember them off the top of my head, but it would appear that I won the gardening lottery, and they went to seed. Only one variety did, and they could have cross-pollinated with any of the other two varieties I put in. But they're all over. I mean, there aren't that many of them, but they're they're all over. <laughs> So true seed potatoes I'll be able to play with next year. So, a couple more over there. One of my buddies, um, Mike, I'm probably going to be sharing them with him because he's a potato guy. He's got way more experience than I do. So if anybody's going to have success, it'll probably be him with the seeds, not necessarily me. And we've got carrots. These are the Paris Markets. Pulling a couple of them out here. Boys, come. You guys want cookies? Here, you want one? Yeah? Hold on, let me break it off. All right, Remy, here's one for you. Ruger, come. Ruger's deaf. He's like 13 years old now. Hey, there's a carrot right here. There you go, bud. Good boy. Where's yours? Where's yours? Where'd you put it? Why'd you put it back in the bed? You're a goof. Remy has a tendency to play with his food, though. 
Uh, what else? Well, I think that's about it for the uh, main garden, what we have going on in here. I plan on getting the rabbits out today. So we'll, I wanted this to dry out before I just let them play in here. Because again, it was raining all last night and this morning. The sun just came out, so everything's pretty well soaked. But we'll get the covers off the bunny bubblers. And you'll get to see that. Pretty awesome. I love this space. 